Good morning, children. I am Purnima, and I welcome you all to my class of English. Today, going to, we are going to revise a, a new lesson, and the name of the lesson is the beggar. Uh, it is written by Anton Chekhov. Anton, uh, the writer is Anton. He, Anton Chekhov is a Russian writer and I will be telling you something about him student. So Anton Chekhov was born in Russia in the year 1879. He studied medicine at Moscow University. So children, he was the one who studied medicine at Moscow University but achieved fame as a writer of short stories and plays. But he had achieved fame as a writer of short stories and plays. He started writing a story even when he was a student. So he started writing a story when he was a student. He died in 1904 just at the age of 44. So he died in the year 1904 just at the age of 44. Today he is regarded as one of the greatest and renowned <coughs> greatest and renowned short story writers in the world. He was born into a family of modest means but received a good education. Uh, he supported his family by granting out some short story for newspaper publications. After uh, he began writing more serious and artistic story, he gained the attention of public and the critics as well. The first edition of the, his complete work was published between 1903 and 1930. So children, this story is written by a great writer, Anton Chekhov, and basically he belongs from Russia. Now, what he wanted to convey through this story, what he wanted to give you people as a theme of the story, that I will be discussing it now. Now, so the, the moral of the story is that in which that the, that the arrogant and self-righteous Lord think he saved the life of one beggar by teaching him how to work for a living. Now, children, a lawyer is there and he is thinking that he had uh, asked one of the beggar, okay, that uh, he had taught him how to work and how to earn his livelihood. If it weren't for the example of the lawyer's compassionate cook who quietly chopped the food for him without expecting anything in return. Now children, it was a cook actually who sacrificed her, sacrificed her life and the writer, the uh, advocate was unknown by all these thing facts. So it was Olga's example. Who was Olga? Olga was an old lady. She was a cook in writer's house. So Olga's example of self-sacrifice, not the lawyer's example of do goodism that inspired the man to change his life. And he started working seriously. So children, it was not actually the lawyer who had taught him how to work. It was actually Olga, an old lady. She had taught him how to work. And he started working seriously. Sarjai, the lawyer, helped Lushkov, the beggar, only after he agrees to chop wood for the lawyer. Now, children, law, Sarjai, he was a lawyer. And uh, Lushkov, children, he had transformed through his effort. And he had given him to chop the wood. Actually, he did not chop the wood. Somebody else chopped the wood. And he gets the money. So all this made him children very sentimental. He thought that somebody somebody is doing the job and he is getting the money. So this is not fair. And he started thinking very seriously. Finally, children, he got a job. He started working. So Olga is actually responsible to create the change in the mind of Lushkov, the beggar. Olga approach is more human and more effective so children it was Olga approach which was more human and more 
active. Now, uh, I will be telling you about the short summary of the story or the background of the story. The first meeting with the beggar. So, here I tell is telling about the first meeting of the beggar. Sarjai was a renowned advocate. So, who was Sarjai? Sarjai was a renowned advocate. One day a beggar came to his door. His name was Dashkov. So, children, one day a beggar was there and the name of the beggar was Dashkov. He had dull, drunken eyes. So, children, what type of beggar he was? He was looking very dull and he had a drunken eyes, children. His, uh, he had a red spot on both of his cheeks and children, you can, he was, you can see some of the red spots was there on his cheeks. The beggar said he had been to village school. He had been a village school teacher. Now children, what did the beggar told Sarjai? He told him that he was a village school teacher, but he had lost his job. But at present, he had lost his job. He had the money and so he was forced to beg. So he is telling he had the money and but he was forced to beg. beg. Sachi recognized the beggar. Now children, when beggar was telling all this to him, suddenly Sachi, it reminded Sachi of something. And he recollected that he had seen the beggar somewhere. Now he started recollecting, he started remembering that whether he had, uh, where he had seen the beggar and suddenly he remembers that he had seen the beggar, he had uh, seen the beggar the other day in another street. There he had said that he was a student who had been expelled. So he told that he was a student and he had been expelled there. He told some other stories when he remembered him. And he told he was quite annoyed with the beggar for telling a shameless lie. Now children, when he remembered this thing that on the, the, the previous day, the same person was telling him that he was a student and he was expelled from the school. And today he is telling different thing. He is telling that he is a, a village school teacher and he had been, he had lost his job. So he felt, Sarji felt very annoyed. In fact, he was having a, a hatred for such type of person and he let's see what he had done so he was quite annoyed with the beggar for telling a shameless lies he threatened to call the police and have him arrested for cheating people now children he was so angry that he told him that he would be calling the police and he would arrest him and he would uh, make him uh, he would be arrested for uh, cheating the people he told that you are simply cheating the people and um, you wanted to gain sympathy by telling that once you were a student, you were expelled from the school and today you are telling that you are a village uh, teacher and you have lost your job. So he is telling that uh, we sh you should not do that and for that I will be calling the police. For a while, the beggar is stuck to what he had said. So then for a few minutes, the beggar is stuck. He was stuck. He told that whatever he had said was right. But then, children, he started. He he um, was feeling guilty, and he accepted that he told the lie. But later, he admitted that he had been tell, telling lies to people to gain sympathy. And he also told that why he was telling lies to the people. He was telling lies to the people to gain sympathy. Um, by gaining sympathy. They would give some money to him. In fact, he had been a singer at a Russian choir. He was a drunkard and was dismissed. Now he was without work. So children, now his actual work is also given here. Who was he? He a, was a person who used to drink a lot and he was uh, working in a Russian choir. And now he was children, since he used to drink so much, he was dismissed from his job. And now he was without work. So what work he is doing now? He is simply telling lie to gain the sympathy of the people 
and he was begging sometime by the name of his school teacher the village school teacher who had lost his job sometime by the name of the student who had been expelled from the school now children when he told sarji about all these things sarji became a bit he was uh, he felt sympathy for him and he told that he would get some job from his house Lashkov pleaded that he was willing to work. Now, so even Lashkov, Lashkov told him that he was willing to work, but right now nobody was giving job to him. So he promised him to, that he would be giving job to him. This he promised. So now, children, he gives him some work. And he asked him that if he would chop a word for him, Sarji called his cook. He told that you, uh, he called his cook and cook and he told he, Olga, this is a person who can help us. And he told uh, Olga to take him to the wood shed and let him chop some food. He would be chopping food for us. Lashkov followed Olga unwillingly. Now, Lashkov, the beggar. So, children. Lashkov, he followed Olga unwillingly. Actually, he did not want to work. But since he told him that he nobody is giving a job and he had to beg, that was the reason now Dylan, he was working. After an hour, Olga came in. She told Sajai that Lashkov had chopped the wood. Sajai was pleased. He gave her half a rubble for Lashkov. Now, children, after half an hour, uh, hour Sarja Olga came and she told and she told that he had chopped all the wood which was given to him. Okay. Sarji was pleased. He gave her half a ruble for Lashkov. Now, he, he gave her half a ruble to Lashkov for Lashkov. When Sarji moved into another house, uh, another house, he asked Lashkov to help with the packing and hauling the furniture. He hardly did anything, but Sarji believed that he had done his job well. But Sarji believed that he had done his job well. He gave Lashkov again a rubel. Lashkov knew how to read and write. Sarji gave him a letter and asked Lashkov to go to one of his friend's house who would give him some copying work to do. Lashkov went away and never came again. So children, this was the reason that children, he might have got job or he did not, he must have left them because he did not like to do the job, whatever was the reason. They did not get any news of Lashkov. So children, now we don't know what happened to him, where he'd gone. And everybody was so busy that even they have forgotten about Lashkov. Now, after two years, two years children passed. One evening, Sarji saw Lashkov at the ticket window of a theater. So one day, Sarji, he had gone to see the movie. And he had seen that, one, uh, that Lashkov was standing near the ticket window. He was very well dressed. He was buying a ticket. He told Sarji that he was a notary and earned 35 rubles a month. Now he told about his job. When he had met Sarjai, he told that he had become a notary. He got the job of a notary and he can earn 35 rubles a month. Sarjai was delighted because he had been able to push a depraved beggar on the right path. Now children, Sarjai was thinking that this job was due to he was thinking that this job was given to him due to his effort lashkov thanked him for for his kindness because he had pulled him out of a sinking pit now children at the same time lashkov uh, children thanked him because he knew that he was in a very poor condition and it was due to his effort he had been he had been reached to such a position But he said the true credit goes for changing him went to Olga. Now he was asking about Olga and he told that 
the true credit which he had a change into a good person goes to olga naturally this surprised sarjay na Sar sarjay was very much surprised when he had heard it he told how lashkov exclaimed that he had never chopped a single piece of wood olga chopping the wood for him and gets chopping the wood for him and gave him the money she wept for him she suffered for him he began to change after watching his sacrifices now she learned what elga was actually treated him like himself when he was sad she used to cry in fact she came to know that he is not able to chop the wood so it was olga actually who chopped the wood for him so children he if there was a bond between that beggar and uh, olga and he she always used to tell you must learn how to work this is not the way that you are working and he began to change after watching her sacrifice and love he uh, stopped drinking he could ne never forget her now children and then he had stopped drinking also as olga told that you must not drink because your body is becoming weak you are not able to work so children he stopped drinking for olga only so in this way he told the writer he told sarjay he told the narrator that it was not actually he had changed his life it was due to olga's effort he had changed his life and it was olga who had actually saved him she was the inspiration behind his career so he told that she was the inspiration behind his career so children now uh, this is the background of the story and this is finished now i will be reading the story and do the explanation part now children the beggar what happened to beggar to the beggar lashkov to change his ways let's read and find it out so children we are reading the book moment and we are at page number 62 now i'm going to read kind sir have pity turn your attention to a poor hungry man for three days i have nothing to eat i hope we can all guess that who had said this word okay kind sir have pity now he is telling we all know this is a beggar who is telling to sarjay the educate for the first time when he met him on the road what did he say he said kind sir have pity turn your attention to a poor hungry man for three days i have had nothing to eat i haven't five kopecks for a lodging children kopecks are the russian currency and lodging children on uh, uh, putting up he wanted to live somewhere else in a proper manner so he is telling that i am hungry i haven't eaten for 3 days and at the same time i haven't 5 kopecks kopecks is a russian currency right now i don't even have a 5 kopecks for a lodging I swear it before God. For eight years, I was a village school teacher, and then I lost my place through intrigues. Uh, okay, so he is telling earlier I was a beggar. Mm, I was a school teacher, and this he told I can swear also, uh, and he was a school um, village school teacher, and there he had lost his job through intrigues. i fell a victim to calumny so children there are many new words which i think you should write it okay so our first word is lodging what is the meaning of lodging lodging means rented house lodging means rented house and then the next word is swear to 
take oath. Swear means to take oath. And uh, interviews means Intrigued children, it means conniv. And calumny means defamation. So he is selling, children I fell victim to cal calumny, okay it was a year now since I have had anything, I have had anything to do and since the last year I am not getting the job also. The adequate surgery look up at the racked, racked is worn out clothes. So children when surgery had hurt his voice he started looking at him. He started looking at his wrapped clothes okay fawn color overcoat fawn is a children fawn means uh, fox the color of the fox so he was putting overcoat okay um that was the color of the fawn and it seemed to him as if he had seen this man somewhere before and children he told he was having this feeling that he had seen, he had already, already seen this man somewhere before. Now, again he started seeing him. So, fawn color overcoat of the suppliant. Suppliant means the beggar at his dull drunk his eyes. So, he started looking him. He saw that he was having a dull and drunk his eyes at the red spot on another check and it seemed to him as if he had seen this man somewhere before he felt that he had seen this man somewhere before i have now had an offer of a position in the province of kailuga now children he was in a such a position in kailuga that he uh, he told him I have now had an offer of a position in the province of Kaluga. The mendicant went out, but I haven't the money to get there. Now, children, that beggar told him that somebody has offered him a job also, but he could not go because he is not having enough money to go there. So, help me kindly. I'm ashamed to ask, but I am obliged to by circumstances now children he is begging he is telling i did not want to beg i do not want to beg i am really feeling shame but it is the circumstances uh, which is persuading me to do all this thing i am obliged to the circumstances uh, sarji eyes fell on the man's overshoes now children sarji uh, he was going on telling all about him to sarji and sarji somewhere was lost he was thinking only this thing that where he had seen this man suddenly children he started looking at him and his eyes fell on his shoes he started looking his uh, shoes uh, one of which was high and the other low one shoe one of the heel was high and the other was a bit low and suddenly he remembered something Look here, it seems to me I met you the day before yesterday in in Sadova Street. Now, children, he told him that, uh, look here, I have already made, uh, meet you somewhere in Sadova Street. And he said, but you had told me that you were a student who had been expelled. Expelled means uh, to um, throw him out. 
you had been expelled and not a village school teacher do you remember he told i still remember that what you had told to other you told to other that you had been expelled from the school you have been kicked out from the school and you told yesterday you told that you were uh, not the school teacher but you were the student did you remember no that can't be so mumbled the beggar no children when he told this thing to um, lashkov he told this can't be so taken aback but he was a bit amazed i am a village school teacher and if you like i can show you my papers he told me no sir i am a village school teacher and if you want i can show you the papers also having done with lying you called yourself a student and even told me what you had be why you had been expelled for don't you remember nachilan now sarji was getting annoyed in fact he was getting irritated and angry he told that earlier you had told me that you were a student and told me that why you have been expelled from the school don't you remember sarji flushed and turned from the rack teacher with an expression of disgust sarji flushed flushed means children flushed means got angry so sarji was very angry with that uh, with that person and he told that um, he in fact felt disgusted with him and he told that this is dishonest uh, this is not fair you are telling lie and you are making fool to other so he is telling that uh, he ex um, he told that you are deceiving others by telling lie this is dishonesty my dear son he cried angrily this is swindling swindling is deceiving what is the meaning of swindling swindling is deceiving so he is telling that you are deceiving other simply you are making fools to other and this is a dishonesty he cried angrily this is swindling i shall send the police for you damn you okay so he told that i would be calling police very soon because children in this way you are making fool to other you are cheating you are swindling swindling means dishonesty deceiving i am neither a student nor a school teacher all that was fiction and formally i sang in a russian choir and was sent away for drunkenness so he told that uh, he started telling all that was a fiction what is the meaning of fiction imagination i sang in a russian choir he told that i was a singer in a russian choir and was sent away without for drunkenness drunkenness means he used to drink a lot of wine okay he used to take a lot of alcohol so he told that i was uh, sent away because i used to drink a lot but what else can i do i can't get along without lying no one will give me anything when i tell the truth who can i do so he told i cannot go i cannot get along without lying nobody will give me anything when i tell the truth what can i do so he is telling me i don't know what to do nobody will give me anything when i tell the truth what can i do what can you do you ask what you can do now he is very angry he is telling you are asking me what to do though you are doing a lot of thing so he is telling he is telling what you cannot do cried sarji come close to him what that's what you can do you must work now sarji told yes if you want to do something then that is the work you must try to work hard now for yourself and that uh, that will only stop you from begging and all this thing work yes i know that myself but where can i find work now children he yes he told work also i was thinking but i don't have work to do right how how uh, i don't know where i am going to find the work and uh, who will give me the work how would you like to chop wood for me now suddenly children 
the narrator asked do you like to chop wood for me the narrator asked him he told he do you like to chop wood for me and where we should uh, and uh, he was still not expecting this thing but he was uh, not knowing what to answer and uh, how would you like to chop wood for me when the writer asked I would not refuse to do that, but in this day, even skilled woodcutters find themselves sitting without bread. Will you come and chop wood for me? Yes, sir, I will. And finally, children, he wrote, yes, I will chop a wood for you. And by telling this, he came with the writer. Okay, in fact, uh, he was uh, not actually knowing how to chop the wood, but he knew that if he will tell anything, the writer will get annoyed and he will stop he will not let him work he will and again he may uh, lend him to the police so children with this i end my story here um, thank you and have a nice day ahead